Hello, so I'm back going over 3.5 optimization application problems. This is going to be example two. Um, the first one, I posted it on Canvas just now. Ooh, it looks like a, about like 25 minute video on just one example. See, I told you these are going to take a little bit longer time, but they're very fun, don't you think? Um, the first one was about a cylindrical container. The second one that I'm about to go over with you is a square-based rectangular box, but another open top. Okay. Um, we will, this will have a volume of 500 cubic centimeter. Let me read this from the beginning. Drum tight containers is designing an open top square-based rectangular box. Square base. Let me try to draw that. Oh, uh, maybe over here. So this is my square base and, uh-oh, that looks like a box. That looks like a cube. I'll make it a little bit longer looking, okay? Two, two. Oh, how beautiful, guys. And I'm going to make this side dotted line. Do you see a square box? I do. Um, I call this side, you know what I want to call this? s for the side length of a square but my s looks like five sometimes i don't want to confuse you how about i just call this side x here x and x okay and i will call um this height because you know they said it's a square base so i know the base is going to be all x's all around but we don't know if that's going to be h uh, x so we're just going to call the height of this box h Okay, and now I got to go back and um, correct myself on my previous video because I did say, oh, it was just a coincidence that the radius and height came out to be the same. And I found out <laughs> they, they, they are actually all going to be the same in this particular type of problem. So uh, what that means is the, 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 the practice problem that I um posted it should be the same i think it's either 6.5 and 6.5 on both or 6.15 and 6.15 on both but i'll double check but i know you're also checking those for me so if you figure out the answer for number 13 this is probably one of them i probably just had a little typo but they are gonna come out to be the same so that's a good news for you all right let's go back and talk about this rectangular box problem um the volume will be 500 cubic centimeters and same same type of problem they want you to minimize the surface area so what you will need is you will you will need a volume formula for a rectangular box and a surface area for this rectangular box let's do that first what is the minimum surface um let's go ahead and write the volume first volume is 500 cubic centimeters and volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height right length times width times height if you multiply those three quantities together um we're gonna get 500 that's what they're saying so x times x times h x squared times h is 500 that's what they're giving us and, you know, remember, we're going to try to just solve this for H real quick because it's easier to. Um, oh, the previous. Oh, it's easier to solve for H um, than solving for X. So if I divide both sides by X squared, I will get the height of this prism or rectangular box is 500 divided by X squared. Later, when we find out what x is, the side length, we will plug in the x in here and find the height, okay? All right, now that's what the volume, the constraint equation gave us. That was a restriction. Um, now let's find the surface area. Surface area. of a rectangular prism. Well, Google has it. Uh, you can Google search for the rectangular uh, prism surface area, but I like to draw out my net. Uh, opening, uh, imagine opening this rectangular box. Um, what we are going to have is we're going to have the four sides, right? One side, 
two side, three side, four side, and then we're gonna have the bottom, the base in the bottom. So imagine folding this is going to give us a rectangular uh, prism with an open top. So if it has a top, I'm just going to have to draw one up there, but this is open top, so I don't need the top piece. Uh, what we know is that this side is X and this side is X, okay? What I will do is I will highlight one, two, three, four of these sides and tell you that all those green sides are actually X. Why? Because they are the side that get folded. So this will get attached or glued to this side, right? This will get glued to this side if you fold it. And this very side is going to make up that side. So um, we're looking at adding four X's together. So the width or the length of this box is going to be four X. Agree? Because we're adding four X's together. Now, what about the height of this box? I'm just going to call that H, right? So let's find the surface area. Area of this little base, area of the base, which is a square, is going to be X times X, which is X squared, right? Now, area of this lateral uh, the lateral area, the area of these four things added together, um, that will be 4x times h. Well, because if you think about it, this little rectangular box is xh, this box is xh, this is also xh, and this is also xh. How many xhs do we have? One, two, three, four. So if you add them together, you get 4xh. But um, in order for me to find the surface area, I just need to add that lateral area plus the base area. So what's the surface area? x squared plus 4xh. Okay. Um, if I decide to be kind of, if I decide to challenge you on the exam and ask you, Hey guys, this is a closed top box. What's going to be the only difference? You just have to stick in that two in front of the X square to represent having one top and two top on top and bottom. But for our problem right here, it's an open top. So we're going to go with that. Now, this is our time for us to plug in the H in here. Ready? So let's rewrite the surface area formula. I'll call it S of X. The surface area in terms of the side length X is equal to x squared plus 4x times h. h is 500 over x squared. If I simplify this, s of x equals x squared plus, notice the x's cancel out. Well, just the one of the x in the denominator. If I'm going to multiply 4 times 500, okay, 4 times 500 is... 2,000, and it was going to be x in the bottom of this fraction, right? But just to make the, uh, the derivative easy, I'm going to write it as x to the negative first power. Um, to find the critical values where minimums and maximums may happen, we're going to find the derivative of this surface area function. That will give us 2x minus 2,000 times x to the negative second power. Now notice, I can rewrite this as 2x minus 2,000 over x squared, just to show you that x cannot be zero. And that's one of the critical value. But what happens if side length is equal to zero? Well, then we're not going to have a rectangular prism. We're not going to have any box. Um, and the, of course, the, the surface area will be minimized because we don't have a box. But if x is zero, if the side length is zero, then h will be just, you know, that, that's, that's not the case that we, we are actually allowed to have in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to just find when this derivative is equal to zero, set equal to zero. So find that critical value. Um, set it equal to zero. Add 2,000 over x squared to both sides. 
2,000 over x squared equals 2x. Remember what I did in the previous example? I multiplied both sides by x squared, right? Then um, this will cancel. I'll get 2,000 equals 2 times x to the third power. Divide both sides by 2. You get x cubed is equal to... Oh, so excited! 1,000! Guys, isn't that a perfect cube? Because now you take cube root of both sides. It's too happy to be true. Cube root of 1,000 is just 10. What I got is x equals 10 is a critical value. This is may where the absolute minimum may happen or absolute maximum may happen. Who knows? But who can tell us? The second derivative test can tell us. So let's do the second. <coughs> Excuse me. Second derivative test. Mm, find the second derivative and plug in that 10 in there. If it comes out to be positive, we'll call it the minimum. If it comes out to be maximum, we'll be in trouble because we won't have any minimum, right? All right, what's the second derivative? Using this first derivative that's in a very nice format for me to take the second derivative. The second derivative um, is going to be 2 um, plus 4,000 x to the negative third power. Let me plug in 10 in here. And 10 such a nice number. I want to do this by hand. 4,000 divided by 10 cubed. That's 2 plus 4,000 divided by 1,000, right? That's 2 plus 4. Ooh, not that we care about the number 6. But I'm excited because it came out to be positive. You know, uh, if the second derivative comes out to be positive, this is concave up, right? Sketch that concave up graph real quick. Ooh, guess what we have? We just show that x equals 10 is where the minimum happens. Awesome. So they wanted to minimize the surface area. I just got x to be 10, right? So length of one side of the base is 10 inches. Height of the box. Now, in the previous example, they came out to be the same, but I'm not going to assume anything here. I'm actually going to plug it in to my height function. 500 divided by x squared. x just came out to be 10 for me. So if I do 500 divided by 10 squared, let me see if I can make my little box a little bit smaller so that I can write a little more here. <laughs> All right. 500 divided by 100. I got the height to be 5. So height of the box will be 5 inches. Now, they actually want you to find the surface area of this box. So, um, somewhere we found the surface area formula, didn't we? Now, take a look. The surface area is x squared plus 4xh. Let's plug in x and h into that function, okay? Um, x is 10 and h is 5. Surface area is equal to um, x squared plus 4xh. So if I plug in everything I know, I'll get the surface area to be 10 squared 